Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name's Cameron, and in today's video, I'm gonna review the second batch of Jack Daniels 12 year. The first batch was one of my favorite products of 2023, and so I cannot wait to check out batch number two. Just like the first one, this is coming in at 107 proof or 53.5% ABV. It does carry that 12 year age statement, although I'm not sure if there's older stuff in the blend. And before we go any further, I do want to say thank you to a very generous Patreon member, Tim B, for sending this sample of batch two my way so that I could make this review for all of you. And of course, I have my bottle of batch one ready to go for a quick comparison at the end of this video. Now, I haven't watched any reviews of batch to. I haven't read anything formally from people reviewing the bottle, although I've heard whispers and those whispers have been mixed, right? Some people are saying that batch two is significantly worse than batch one and other people who I know have tasted both are saying that batch two is the bee's knees. So I have absolutely no idea what to expect. And I think that's good. I'm coming into this really with an open mind and we're going to start with this batch two review, then go on to that comparison at the end. So without further ado, let's get into this now. Very curious because Again, I loved batch one so much. I thought it was the closest thing you could get to King of Kentucky that was, you know, decently available, let's say, at a relatively affordable price point, even on secondary when you compare it to that King of Kentucky stuff. So let's get onto it now. Batch two on the nose. Let's see what we get. Right, so batch two, uh, first impression on this is a big banana note. And again, we're gonna we're gonna compare this to batch one, but I don't recall getting this much banana on the initial release. Now, obviously Jack Daniels is known for that banana note, but here it's it's strong. I mean, interestingly enough too, I know with Jack Daniels, we're, we're always talking about Lincoln County process type stuff and that the impact that that has on the whiskey. Now with George Dickel products, we always talk about minerality and the Flintstone vitamin note, and a lot of people don't care for that, myself included. I'm picking up a lot, and I mean a lot of that kind of charcoal, Lincoln County process, mineral influence on the nose. So first impression is big banana, uh, big mineral on the nose. I'm also getting kind of like some blueberry notes. So I do typically like blueberry notes, in my whiskey, blueberry, there's that kind of signature brown form and acetone note here. And a ton of chocolate. So, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to kind of put all this together, you could say like blueberry pancakes or, or chocolate pancakes. You could go kind of that route because there is this kind of this sweetness to it, this caramelized kind of sweetness. But by and large for me, this... This is a whiskey very focused on the banana notes, very focused on the mineral influence, presumably from the Lincoln County process, with some dark fruit notes and dark chocolate notes to boot. But I don't think, for me, this is coming off, I don't think this is coming off like something where I would say this is this is close to King of Kentucky. This is getting to that really aged Brown Foreman molasses profile. It's It's really not there for me. Last but not least, I do want to say that there is there is a lot of oak influence on this and these older Jack Daniels products have their own, in my mind, distinct version of oak. Kind of hard to describe. It, it, it really blends in well with those chocolate notes and that Lincoln County mineral charcoal kind of thing. I would say that as a whole, when you look at the dark, the dark aspect of this whiskey, it comes together in a way that is sweet and inviting punctuated by this minerality, which I don't care for, I hate to say it, but there's also kind of this little bit of bitterness there, like almost coffee bitterness. And I think that's a unique aspect of these aged Jack Daniels products. And it's the way for me that the chocolate notes and the mineral notes and the oak notes interact with one another to bring about this almost granular, like ground coffee bitterness is the way that I would put it. So with that said, let's get it on the palate now. Cheers. Mm. A big red fruit. Yeah, I would say chocolate covered cherry punch on the front of the palate. So I didn't see that coming. I didn't get that much cherry on the nose. Maybe a little bit, but not enough for me to even call out above the banana and the blueberry notes. Chocolate covered cherry right up front. And I mean, even even those coffee notes I was talking about, like that hits you really in the mid palate as it rolls back. Pretty enjoyable whiskey, like nothing wrong with this stuff. It really reminds me of what I would have expected 
Jack Daniels 12 to taste like after tasting the initial release of Jack 10. This essentially tastes like Jack 10 at a higher proof with a little more age. Now that's exactly what it is, right? But that's not how the first batch of Jack 12 came off to me. The first batch of Jack 12 came off like something almost com completely different than Jack 10. But this to me just feels like a more advanced Jack Daniels 10. So we're gonna do one more sip of it, but I do wanna get quickly into this comparison now uh, with batch one and see how this thing differs on the nose. Yeah, <laughs> this is night and day. Okay, so still the acetone note. In fact, maybe even a little stronger on batch one, but this one is molasses and vanilla bean. It does still retain a little bit of that grittiness that I'm talking about from, again, I would imagine the Lincoln County process, but this has, <laughs> this has the King of Kentucky molasses vanilla thing that you get from those really, really aged uh, whiskeys. Now, I don't know, again, if there's older stuff in any of these batches. If I had to put money on it, it just tastes like to me that the first batch of Jack 12 might have some older barrels in it. And if it doesn't, it could just simply come down to barrel quality, or maybe some of these barrels were from higher parts of Rick houses. We will never know uh, unless from, uh, somebody from Jack Daniels you know, talks about this. But just me as, as, the, as the person tasting these without any knowledge of what's actually in the blend, this comes off older. I still think it's about as close as you can get to a King of Kentucky profile. I mean, Michter's 10 Bourbon 2023 gets you sort of there, but the proof is nowhere near. And, uh, you know, President's Choice, Jack, Jack Daniels, Coy Hill, some of these have aspects of the Coy Hill profile. But comprehensively speaking, I think this batch one of Jack 12 is about as close as you can realistically get without shelling out the money or waiting in a line for like 48 hours to get a King of Kentucky. Um, so we're gonna take a sip now of batch one and see how this differs on the palate now. Oh, it's so much more integrated and smooth. Like it's it's silky on the palate as it envelops. Very, very sweet. The vanilla notes are st standing out to me so much. And that is, again, just this aged bourbon vanilla, that vanilla cream, vanilla bean thing. Um, whereas I feel like batch two came off with more of that granular ground coffee, uh, not only flavor on the palate, but texture. Now I will say, the, the palate of batch two was better than the nose. The nose I am not a big fan of because there's so much banana. It still feels kind of young on that side of things, even though it has the oak and the darker notes uh, to let you know that there is some, some age on it. But I think the palate of batch two is significantly better than the nose. And I think batch one all the way through is just fantastic whiskey. So let's do one more sip now of batch two. Yeah. Look, there's nothing wrong with this whiskey. And if they hadn't released batch one, to me, the second batch of Jack 12, we would all be like, wow, this is this is great stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Exactly what you would expect after tasting Jack Daniels 10. But they kind of shot themselves in the foot by releasing such an amazing batch one of this product. And I hope that whatever the difference is between these two behind the scenes, barrel selection, barrel age, barrel placement, who knows? I hope that they go back to whatever they were doing for batch one on the next release uh, because it is significant whiskey and batch two is just good whiskey. I think worth the SRP on batch two all day, every day. Is it worth secondary, which I think these are two to 250 on secondary. No, batch two is absolutely not worth that. Batch one to me is, it, it's special whiskey. Perhaps the best Jack Daniels product that's ever been released, if not it's up there. You know, it's in the conversation with your Coy Hills, uh, with your special release rise and things like that. Um, but batch two is just very, very good Jack Daniels. And I think that's going to do it for this review. So let me know what you think of batch two, if you've had the opportunity to taste it at this point. Thank you again, Tim, for this sample. This has been enlightening for me. And I think if there's any company that can turn this around where we've seen, we've seen products from between, you know, Booker's and Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and mainstay products that really fall off and lose quality. If there's one company that's ramping up the quality, the age statements, keeping prices low, you know, availability high, all of those things, it's got to be Jack Daniels. And I think this is the, the company to kind of turn this ship around a little bit and bring back the batch one 12 year profile. So that's going to do it, guys. Cheers. Uh, again, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams.